Thank you, Liz. That is all. I like the back. Thanks, man. Y'all did this? Y'all built it? Yeah, I built it. Heck yeah. It's uh, yeah. six TNT 15s on okay. the three Rockville's. Is that an American base? Yeah, American okay. base. Wow, I like the port. Thank you. What is it tuned to? Uh, it's, I want to say it's around like 28-ish. It's, it's low. Okay. And these are your three amps on the subs? Yeah. Yep. Three DB15s. And they're, uh, what are they wired to for two per pair? Uh, one ohm. One ohm? Yeah. What about your electrical? Uh, CES 270, the one XS D 3400, and two Tekkas. Okay. Oh, wow. Nice. What was your name? Tom. Tom. All right. Let's see. Have you metered it yet? Uh, not, not recently. Last time I metered it, um, was like a 148.9. Okay. It's a cheap build. C pillar budget. C pillar build. Yep. behind the box is it just the box yeah just the box okay um, cool. just you know, a little area to put stuff yeah okay that's all good man i was just curious can i see the alternator yeah. heck yeah so you got everything in the back seat yep and you can still use your back seats if you need yep so it's just to be able to showcase the amps and the battery and all yeah we were messing with some stuff a little bit ago and... heck yeah i like it man it looks good thanks That's right. Yes, sir. Got the big three done, too? Yep. Nice. So how big is the sealed section? Uh, well, it's actually a sixth. Um, oh, man. I, I just messed up, man. I got to see the port. I didn't know it was a sixth order. Real small for a sixth. Okay, I see it now. Sorry, I had to get deeper in. So it's a sixth order, okay. So what are the two tunings then? Uh, I want to say it's like 28 and 56. 
So that's a, that's your bandwidth. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Wow, that's why I guess it was playing the lows. That makes sense. The yeah. sixth orders give you that low beat. Yep. Sweet. What are these subs rated at? Yeah. I want to say the one. Twelve fifteen hundred. Oh yeah. This looks good, man. I like the glittered splatter you put in the back. It makes it makes it pop out. Yeah. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. What was your name? Tom. Tom. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jake Barrow, and I do daily cardio videos. Hope you enjoyed the build today. Definitely a nice family-based vehicle with uh, back seats as well as front seats in the C-Pillar 615's 6th order. So if you didn't watch at the end, this is actually a 6th order, not a 4th order. I thought it was a 4th order, so normally for this amount of space, it's normally 4th order based. But he did a really good job with making this a 6th order band pass enclosure. Got a couple things I'll talk about before that. Just want to say thank you guys for always watching. Go ahead and hit that like button. Let the owner know what you think about his build. Comment some good feedback and uh, stay tuned for more videos. So first thing I want to do, shout out. I try to do a shout out every time I do a commentary at the end of demo videos. So today is going to go to Brandon Banks. He uh, messaged me on Jacob Viral on Facebook. So don't forget Jacob Viral on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow me. You can add me. You can like my page, etc. So whatever you want to do. Send me pictures and builds as well of your build. So also if you have questions. So he said, keep up the good, amazing work, Jacob. Here's some pictures of my car. I did everything myself and planning on attending Slamology this year. So I'm going to go ahead as I talk through this, reading this real quick. This is some pictures you can see. He said, if you could give me a shout out, it'd be really cool. Thanks again for everything you do. So he has like an Alpine head unit. He's got a, some Kicker Q class 6.5 inch component speakers, a Kicker 8 inch sub. He's got a couple of Kicker monoblocks and four channels, an audio control, Singer 10 farad capacitor, optimal red starting battery. Looks like he's got the big three done, Kicker interconnects, as well as his box was tuned to 32, 38 hertz, and a couple of dedicated yellow top for the stereo battery. So anyway, there's your shout out there. Appreciate you watching and being a subscriber, um, Brandon Banks. So there you go. There's your shout out, man. Nice system, by the way. And a 2018 Subaru WRX. All right, so I got two things I'll talk about before I end with this. Uh, a couple of people always ask me, hey, Jacob, how can I get a hold of you? Or, hey, what do I do about getting a shout out? So I got a couple of people lined up already. But if you ever want a shout out, just comment with some good feedback, <clears throat> excuse me, and ask for a shout out with feedback or message me on Instagram or Facebook. I'll be glad to give you feedback on your build as well as answer your questions or be able to give you a shout out. And it's good for commentaries to talk about questions and answers here too. I'm not the best at this, but hey, it's fun hobby of cardio world. So two things to talk about. First off, one thing, sealing off the edges of vehicles with it when it involves systems. So that goes with trunks, walls, cabin space areas, etc. Anywhere that you're looking at doing anything to contain bass, pretty much install a subwoofer or stereo, even speakers for your doors. Things that you can do to contain the bass or the, the output of your system can go for the same with home audio in your house as well. So notice when you have your doors open versus closed, if you're in your house for home audio, your doors are open versus closed or your windows are open versus closed. If you have the trunk open, uh, the back hatch, etc. Things that vary on how your bass output will be depending on those variations, but going to sealing off edges. So just like in this build, he had a perfect panel wall built around the front of his wall in the C pillar. So it's sealed off all the way around. So stuff like this is gonna be critical to output. So if you're trying to look to get a little louder and you have a trunk system, you never know, sealing off that subwoofer box with it facing into this cabin may gain on the meter or just get you a little bit louder output, but you gotta trial and error that. And that goes for wall builds as well as any case scenario I mentioned. So a lot of different opportunity there for some of you guys that probably watch or consider it. Hey, I wonder what I can do. That maybe give you some ideas. Second thing, carpet and or, and or fur. So this build really did well with cosmetic look. I personally like the way it looked. Um, the amp rack may not be the best it's mounted on the back, but he has double or triple baffles. So it's going to be a lot less bracing issues with flex. So I'm sure he probably didn't have very many abrasive um, vibration problems, but always best optimally for you to have amp rack separate. But it's nice to have a family vehicle like this where he could be able to put it all like that. So really good job. I really like the way the uh, style was. But back to the uh, carpet and fur. So it's a really good cosmetic look, but I had a couple of people brought up ways that are most optimal for output carpet and fur are not really the most optimal when it comes to output because it actually absorbs some of your base especially as you have more abrasive items like um fur 
or really long um, fabrics that people put on on subwoofer boxes, it's not a smooth surface. You want something that allows the flow of pressure to flow smoothly and evenly. So carpet and fur is not a good option for the most output wise, I would say. So a lot of these boxes that you see where people have nice smooth surfaces with prime or glossy looks at the end, or even um, tape, a lot of people use uh, aluminum tape as well. So these smooth surfaces, especially at the port area, it's very critical for the output of the system. So things that you can consider or look into when it comes to ways to improve your build as well. So that's all I got for today. Jacob Bottle out. See you on the next video.